Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, see what is going on, you can go ahead and catch us there. Uh, not a ton of regular Linux news tonight, but we will dive in with what we got. The first up, Winjaro has some new releases came out. Winjaro 24.1, this release with GNOME 46, KDE Plasma 6.1, and XFCE Desktop 4.8 for the official builds. Of course, there are probably some um, uh, community builds that are out there as well. I didn't look through what all of those were, but of course, this one does bring some of the latest uh, Arch updates to the system. Of course, if you are new to Linux, Manjaro holds back the Arch updates a little bit. This one's one that's based on Arch, but it's not quite a pure Arch like in a um, Endeavor OS or uh, Garuda or a number of other Linux uh, distributions based on Arch are. Many of those are Arch with extra tools. Manjaro holds back packages a little bit, tests for a little bit more stability. For the most part, it does a pretty good job. There was a time that Manjaro wasn't uh, the most stable, but I ran it for several years without any major problems on my Raspberry Pi, uh, which is good. So you know, for that, I, I do like that. Uh, this release here, GNOME 46, of course, I think GNOME 47 is the one that is out. Uh, we are doing in a, a release of Ubuntu um, 2410 tomorrow or yesterday, depending on when you're seeing this. And that's running GNOME 47. But 46 is the current one that is uh, out and stable. And so they have added this. Um, so they're right on those verge. So Manjaro is making use of Linux 6.10 kernel. Uh, while the 6.6 .6 LTS and 6.1 LTS are also available if you happen to want one of those more LTS kernels or an older one, depending on what you are doing. So you can have a look over at Manjaro.org if you want to download a copy of it. If you are new to Linux, Manjaro is not a bad place to start. It is one of the most beautiful and thought out Linux distributions. It does carry with it in the modern day era anyway. It does carry with it quite a bit of stability. So that is worth checking out. FFmpeg 7.1 promises some major improvements in video processing. So uh, this one's going to debut with full Vulkan encoding pipelines, enhanced AAC decoding with MVHEVC support and more. Also, we have uh, H.265 support in there. Uh, a lot better support, I think, than we've had. I, I know um, maybe, maybe it was H.264. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of changes now. They did mention in the article that um, they are focusing on some industry standards as some industries are really keeping an eye on what um, FFmpeg is doing and uh, utilizing this. Of course, we are seeing a lot more industry players utilizing FOSS software to avoid some of the heftier licensing fees and, and things like that. Unfortunately, most people will feed back uh, into those projects, but uh, they are uh, greatly increasing a lot of the ability to do video encoding and things like that. That makes me kind of happy. So I will play around with that a little bit when I um, uh, when I see that start start to roll out and things. Of course, I do have a test build over on Arch that can run some video stuff if I need to. So we'll go ahead and keep an eye on that. Uh, Pine is releasing um, a few new things. Uh, they are bringing back their e-ink tablets. Right now, I think they're listed at $3.99. Uh, but these are like, they're not just your little e-books. These are running a full functioning operating system of Debian, which even includes playing Debian doom so you can actually uh you can actually uh use this thing for a full debian desktop that is based on an e-ink screen i would kind of like to get one except i don't really want to pay 400 dollars for a device that is still in the developmental stages they're making a lot of positive strides towards the distribution which is based on debian but it's still a little pricey for me to get one just to just play around with. Although if I could get a open source e-reader based on this from Pine, I would love to experiment with something like this. Now this does actually have an e-book in e-reader mode. So 
this does carry with it some some neat things. Sadly, though, we're still not getting uh, refreshed or or upgraded phones or things like that. And I think that that's really what's hurting the Linux phone the most. That all the phones that we have are still spec'd from a long time back, and it means that the development's going to be a lot slower. I can test out these devices, but they just don't work as well as I would like them to work. They certainly are not phones ready for mainstream production, but they are phones that you can do some really fun stuff with by having a full Linux system directly on your device. So uh, that's what uh, Pine is up to. And on to our final story, Valve and Arch are announcing a collaboration. Now, it's not necessarily emerging or maybe even not even a partnership like our thumbnail says. Mostly a collaboration where the Steam, uh, the Steam is going to lend some of its people into the Arch system, mostly as contractors in order to help Arch with some of the infrastructure. They have two projects in specific they're working on, and that is the Service Infrastructure and Secure Signing Enclave. This is going to allow Arch to run distributions even a little bit faster. Um, I'm not sure how much faster we can actually run this. What, am I going to get updates every 30 seconds after running a Pac-Man update? Or uh, am I going to have to be delayed like a minute or so? I don't know. I just know if I run updates on Arch later on that afternoon, there's a bunch more. How much faster do we need to have this to go, Arch? Come on. Now, of course, I do realize what they're talking about. They do need a little bit more resources and a little bit way, uh, better way of handling some of, the, some of the signing and the infrastructure. And that's what Valve is going to help with. So, of course, this was going to help Valve because Valve is based on Arch. It is feeding a lot back into the Arch system already. So this is going to be able to help backport things into the Arch system quite a bit faster in order to facilitate the better uh, stability and better updates into Steam OS, which, of course, is based on Arch. So it is very interesting and encouraging to see that happening, especially the way they're doing it, which is more like a contractor type approach. So, yeah, we need you for this period of time. Guy's going to come on over, work on some things, make a little bit of extra money, and then... Um, you know, um, you know, back off when they don't necessarily need the help. So it's a really good approach to see how they are doing it. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, uh, particularly useful as our uh, video on Godot this week was uh, limited in its monetization reach. Um, you know, that's what you get for talking about uh, controversial subjects. Uh, but if you do want to help support the channel, you can have a look over at Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. Of course, this week we did release the latest science fiction short story. You can find it over there. You can download the audio book. The link is available on Patreon, and that is uh, good until October 31st. So you can grab that through the end of the month. You can read this story for free. Also, the Code Red book is ready, and I will have coupon codes for Code Red. Uh, if anybody wants to get it at a pretty good discount, you will be uh, able to see those over on uh, Patreon or our other supporter networks as well. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.